We got some more information on the joystick drift that has been plaguing controllers and just how long a DualSense 5 controller will last. So there was a teardown video that got released of the PlayStation 5 DualSense and really dug deep into the joystick drift, looking at the parts within it and just how long potentially the joysticks will last on a PS5 DualSense controller. Now, before we get into this any further, if you guys are new here and you enjoy what you see throughout this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button to help this channel grow, help grow this community so we can have some great conversations in the comments below. Joystick drift has been a issue amongst the video game industry with pretty much all controllers out there right now except i think the xbox one and series x controllers like the original ones the ones that come with the console i don't think those have had too many issues although i do believe they were involved in some lawsuit in total against xbox because of the elite controllers having joystick drift me personally i've experienced joystick drift with just one of my nintendo joy cons and that's been it but everything else i've had has been good my elite one controllers have been good my series controllers have been good my playstation controllers have been good as well but we're getting more information as to why these problems are probably occurring within all of the controllers within the entire industry and the main thing is at least the thing that we can say is constant amongst all the controllers is that they all use the same part for the joystick so the part that is used within the playstation 5 dualsense amongst other controllers here is from a company called ALPS or Alps and they are the manufacturers of the joystick parts and basically what is going on this is from a video from iFix they looked into it and they say that the wear to the potentiometer caused by the general use was the biggest reason for joystick drift. But to understand what a potentiometer is, I'm going to let the video explain it because he does a way better job at explaining it than I can. So let's listen to what he says. From covers houses a potentiometer. That's two per joystick set perpendicular to each other. One potentiometer senses up and down movement and the other left and right. To understand the part they play, it's helpful to know how a potentiometer measures position in a device like this. It starts with a strip of material with a known uniform resistance value, that is, how hard it tries to stop an electric current running through it. Put one terminal at each end of the strip so you can apply a known voltage across the strip. Now add a third terminal, called a wiper, that slides back and forth along the strip. Now the controller can read the voltage at the wiper, which will change predictably based on its location. These potentiometers in the DualSense joysticks work like that, except instead of moving back and forth, the wiper moves around a semicircular track made of printed carbon film. When you move the joystick with your thumb, it rotates two little shafts, which twist the wipers back and forth. There are two other noteworthy components in the modern joystick. One is a spring that returns the joystick to a centered, neutral position when you let go. And the other is a push-in button action that many controllers offer in their thumbstick. So yeah, there you have it. Pretty much those potentiometers are getting dirty. They're getting broken. They're not working as they're supposed to, which is causing the drift. Now, the interesting part of this article and this video is I did an in-depth analysis as to how long they think that the DualSense 5 controller sticks will last. And according to their analysis, I fixed its own analysis of Call of Duty Warzone gameplay. This could translate to just 417 hours before the manufacturer's operating life for the joysticks parts is exceeded. So 417 hours, if you were to play for two hours a day, they would translate roughly to a life expectancy within seven months. Now, this is an estimation. This is coming from what they think is their best solution to what the problem is with the joysticks with the DualSense 5 controller drifting. So this may not actually translate into real life use. Maybe a DualSense controller is gonna last way longer than that, and maybe it'll last way shorter than that, or any of the controllers that have those joysticks in it. And this information was obviously done because of the class action lawsuit based on the PlayStation 5 DualSense drift. Now, the problem here I have with this is that one, obviously these all these manufacturers should be looking into making sure that the joystick drift isn't a problem going forward and maybe looking for a different company to provide the potentiometers or potentially look at how they are building their controllers with the potentiometers and what could it cause it to drift and how could they put something in place to avoid them becoming 
broken so easily, them becoming dirty so easily, and then having the drift problem. Now, when it comes to the dual sense specifically, because this is what this in-depth analysis was about, my problem with the dual sense controller is the fact that it is an expensive controller. For me in Canada, the dual sense is $89.99 or $90 before tax. So it's over $100 easily after tax. And I believe in the United States, it's $70 before tax. And then whatever state you're in, it'll translate into more after tax. But for a controller that is standard for the console, you have to use that controller. For it to have these issues, to me is an issue because it means that when you're getting it out of the box, technically within seven months based off of what they're saying you're gonna to have to go out and shell another 70 plus dollars for a new dual sense controller on top of that it's not the only issue with the dual sense so far there's also the r2 triggers and a lot of people's triggers are breaking so it seems like the dual sense controller for as great as it is technologically with the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers it's obviously still in the infancy of its build quality because there's still issues and hopefully going forward there are more iterations that solve the joystick issues and solve the r2 issues and just for reference here i made this video um in december december 24th christmas eve and it was about the major issues with the ps5 dual sense controller and the triggers breaking and it has 7211 views right now and i put this video out just to provide the information as to what is going on and i've been getting tons of comments and i still get comments on it today about people having issues with the triggers in their dual sense controller i'm just going to scroll down through the comments and show you the people that have been replying about the r2 triggers to show that this is actually an issue even for my video with only 7,000 views people are actually complaining and talking about it. This person here just removed Torsion Spring last night. What did you expect? Dude, it's from China. It's not the adaptive triggers that are the problem. It's a little metal spring. I know because mine broke, but I fixed it. The spring had snapped in half. I got this problem last week and I sent it into Sony Service Center. I received it today and they fixed it, but the trigger doesn't feel the same, just a little weaker than before. I got my PS5 two weeks ago. I've noticed sticky buttons in either input lag or the buttons don't pop back out to be pressed again. Tempted to turn off the haptic feedback as I've only gone, got one controller and want to wait to see if they release a new version anytime soon. I got this problem since yesterday and the controller is not even a week old. Second controller that broke. The first one was the triangle button that gets kind of stuck. Happened to me last night and the spring was missing when I opened it. By the way, I have been playing every day since day one release, so that's what caused it. But hopefully Sony fixes this so the controllers can last longer. My controller just clicks like it's missing cogs. Pile of cheap crap inside. Haven't even had my PS5 for 10 days. R2 triggers already busted. I had two controllers now with defective R2 buttons. Anyways, I could keep going on and on there's so many comments like that on this video it actually blew me away i didn't expect as many people to be reporting this issue after i made the video and obviously like i don't know everyone in the comments maybe they're making it up maybe they're not i have to believe and go off of what they're saying in these comments so it seems like there are definitely a decent amount of issues with the ps5 dual sense controller and the sad thing about this part here the drift is that every manufacturer is using this part here so it seems like it's either the part that's the problem or the way that these parts are being implemented into these controllers anyways guys that's it for me let me know what you think about this in the comments below have you been experiencing any drift from any controllers that you have whether that's nintendo switch whether that's the ps5 or the xbox and if you have been experiencing it what did you do to get a fix did you send it back to get repaired did you buy a new one or did you fix it yourself thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you are new here and you like what you see throughout this video i I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button to help this channel grow help grow this community so we can have some great conversations in the comments below thank you again for watching thank you for your support and i'll catch you in the next video